Welcome to Water Level. The story of water in the American West continues to unfold at Lake Mead and Lake Powell, two reservoirs that are central to the lifeline of the Colorado River. These bodies of water provide drinking water, irrigation, and hydroelectric power for millions of people across seven states and even parts of Mexico. But the latest levels show how fragile this system has become. Lake Mead, as of mid-September 2025, sits at 1,056.90 feet above sea level. That's 172 feet below its full pool capacity of 1,229 feet. Lake Powell, upstream, is holding at 3,546.22 feet, which is about 154 feet below its full pool level of 3,700 feet. Both lakes are experiencing conditions that highlight the long-term impacts of drought and human demand. At Lake Mead, the graph of this year's levels tells the story of seasonal snowmelt, inflows, and withdrawals. The reservoir saw a peak earlier in the year, climbing above 1,068 feet in the spring before steadily declining through summer. By July, the lake was hovering close to 1,054 feet, one of its lowest seasonal points, before beginning a modest recovery into September. This cycle reflects the reality of the Colorado River's dependence on annual runoff. Snowpack in the Rocky Mountains provides the bulk of the river's water, but warming trends, reduced precipitation, and higher evaporation rates continue to shrink that supply. Even with short-term rebounds, the overall trajectory has been downward for decades. Lake Powell, the second largest reservoir in the country, shows a similar pattern but with its own dynamics. Starting the year around 3,572 feet, the lake steadily declined through spring. A brief bump in late May into June reflected snowmelt inflows, lifting levels back near 3,560 feet. But from July onward, the lake dropped rapidly, now sitting near 3,546 feet in mid-September. That steady decline reflects both natural losses and the intentional release of water downstream to Lake Mead, part of the coordinated management of the Colorado River system. Powell's levels are crucial because the lake acts as a buffer, ensuring steady water deliveries under interstate compacts and generating electricity at Glen Canyon Dam. The combined picture of both lakes reveals the tightrope managers must walk. Lake Mead, controlled by Hoover Dam, provides water for Arizona, Nevada, California, and Mexico. Its tier system for shortages is based on how low the reservoir sits each year. Powell, meanwhile, ensures that the upper basin states, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, and New Mexico, can meet their obligations to the lower basin. When Powell is too low, it cannot release enough to support Mead, creating a domino effect of challenges. In recent years, emergency agreements and conservation measures have helped keep both reservoirs just above critical thresholds, but the margins are thin. What we are witnessing in 2025 is not a single year's problem, but the accumulation of years of drought and overuse. The Colorado River has been stretched beyond its natural limits for decades. Demand often outpaces supply. Higher temperatures mean more evaporation from the reservoirs and less runoff making its way into the river. The result is a system where both Lake Mead and Lake Powell spend more time operating near historic lows than at healthy levels. These conditions threaten hydropower generation, agricultural irrigation, and urban water supplies for millions of people. Lake Mead's current level of 1,056 feet is not just a number, it is a benchmark that dictates water allocations. If the lake drops too low, the turbines at Hoover Dam could lose their ability to generate power, and further mandatory cuts would ripple across the southwest. Already, Arizona and Nevada have faced reductions, with farmers and cities forced to adjust to less water. Powell's level of 3,546 feet raises similar alarms. Glen Canyon Dam requires a minimum elevation of about 3,490 feet to keep producing hydropower efficiently. The lake is inching closer to that threshold, raising concerns about future energy reliability for millions who depend on that electricity. Another layer to this story is the broader drought in the western United States.
the Colorado River Basin has experienced one of the driest 25-year periods in more than a thousand years, according to tree ring studies. While some years bring heavy snowpack and short-lived relief, the trend is clear. This system is shrinking. Efforts to renegotiate water-sharing agreements among the basin states are underway, but they are politically and legally complex. Each state has entrenched interests, and balancing urban growth, agriculture, and environmental needs is a monumental challenge. The importance of these lakes extends beyond numbers on a chart. They are barometers of how well the West is adapting to a growing demand. Cities like Las Vegas have already invested in new intake tunnels to draw water even if the lake falls below existing infrastructure. Farmers are shifting to more efficient irrigation methods, and some fields are being fallowed altogether. Hydropower operators are adjusting to lower flows, though at a financial cost. Every decision highlights the delicate balance between human use and natural supply. Still, there are glimmers of resilience. Conservation programs have helped slow the rate of decline in recent years. New negotiations between upper and lower basin states aim to find more flexible ways to share shortages. And ongoing public awareness campaigns are reminding millions of residents just how critical their water use decisions are to the health of the Colorado River system. But these measures must continue to scale up to keep pace with the challenges ahead. Looking ahead, both Lake Mead and Lake Powell will remain in the spotlight. Their levels dictate not just water deliveries, but the political and economic stability of the entire region. Each foot of elevation, gained or lost, carries enormous implications. For now, the lakes are holding above their Deadpool thresholds, but the margin for error is shrinking. The current numbers, 1,056 feet at Mead and 3,546 feet at Powell, serve as reminders of how much the future depends on balancing conservation, innovation, and cooperation. The story of Lake Mead and Lake Powell is ultimately the story of the Colorado River itself, a river that carved the Grand Canyon, nourished civilizations for centuries, and now sustains tens of millions of people. But it is also a river under immense strain, where every drop is accounted for and every change in water level is closely watched. The future of these reservoirs will depend not only on nature's generosity, but also on the choices we make as a society to adapt to new realities. As we close this discussion, it's clear that the levels at Lake Mead and Lake Powell are more than statistics. They are signals of the West's ongoing struggle with water scarcity. The charts may show small rises and falls, but the underlying story is one of resilience tested against the backdrop of human demand. Whether these lakes can recover to healthier levels remains uncertain, but what is certain is that their fate is intertwined with the future of the Colorado River and the millions who depend on it every single day. And that wraps up today's deep look at the water levels of Lake Mead and Lake Powell. These reservoirs are more than just numbers on a chart. They're lifelines for the Southwest and indicators of how well we're adapting to the challenges of drought and rising demand. The future of the Colorado River depends on conservation, cooperation, and smart management, and every rise or drop in these lakes tells part of that story. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can stay updated on every change in the Colorado River system.